I was trying to be reasonable with him, Your Honor, when he pulled his sword on me. Uh, Your Honor, may I question the witness? If you're going to act as this gentleman's attorney, you may. Officer Crandall, did you examine the sword? I don't have to examine a sword to know it's a deadly weapon. Your Honor, I give you the People's Exhibit A. Now examine the edge. That's not a fighting sword. That's a ceremonial sword. It couldn't cut butter. Your Honor, can I see that? Now, if he had hit me on the head with this, the ceremony could have been my funeral. Your Honor, all I can say is I was protecting myself from unlawful arrest. The citizens of this country are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the right of free speech. There he goes again, with all that radical talk. Your Honor, I was only doing my duty. He was conducting a rally without a permit. Uh, what, Officer Crandall, in your mind constitutes a rally? Addressing people constitutes a rally. How many? One, two, a hundred? There couldn't have been more than a dozen people standing around chatting. Well, he was doing all the chatting. They were just listening. Well, maybe if you hadn't come by and broken it up, they might have chatted back. As a matter of fact, it was their chatting that started him chatting. Mr. Uh, uh, what shall I call you? You may call me President Washington, sir. And uh, where do you come from? President. Virginia, sir. Oh, yes, yes, where the father of our country was born. I am the father of your country, sir. <laughs> and uh, how did you get into this century, President? Providence brought me here, Your Honor. There, I think I answered that question without lying. <laughs> and how do you plead? Uh, may I answer that, Your Honor? Certainly. Not guilty. Now, Mrs. Stevens, we can't have our citizens going around attacking officers of the law with swords. Ceremonial. Ceremonial. Especially while masquerading as George Washington, which I find offensive in itself. I am not an imposter, sir. Um, Your Honor, I, I don't think it makes any difference whether he's George Washington or not. What's important is that this gentleman has served to remind us of the things that George Washington stands for. Oh, I'll be the first to admit that his behavior, to some, might seem a bit eccentric. But what a noble eccentricity, sir. I mean, would you rather have eccentrics who think they are uh, Benedict Arnold or John Wilkes Booth? Your point is well taken, Mrs. Stevens. The president was merely defending the Constitution of the United States, which is something he holds very dear. And he was acting under his rights of peaceful assembly and free speech. I rest my case. Mrs. Stevens, it's uh, lamentable, but true. But there are times when, in the interests of maintaining law and order, we we tend to overlook those rights given to our citizens by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. You uh, have quite effectively reminded me that this is one of those times. Case dismissed. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <sighs> Now, may I have my sword back? If you'll uh, sign this receipt. Uh, may I uh, ask you a question, sir? You may, sir. Will you continue to be George Washington? No man should live beyond his time. Therefore, although I shall continue to be George Washington, or I can be no other, I will not be that untimely gentleman in your gracious presence. 